Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our uh, third live streaming of Loan Officers of America Network. You guys all had a fantastic Thanksgiving and are ready for the last day of or last month of 2019. Hard to believe that the year has already gone by, but it's been an amazing year. Hopefully all of you guys can say the same thing. In fact, 2019 will definitely go down as my best year in the mortgage industry by a long shot. As was 2018, I know we were kind of countered the rest of the industry, but it's been a, an amazing run for the last few years and I anticipate 2020 to be even stronger than 2019. So part of this conversation is to help prepare all of you for 2020 and things to come. We're gonna talk about mostly how the industry shifted on where it goes to generate clients because there has been a big shift. But before I go into that, I'm gonna give you a little backstory. I got into business in 20 or 2001 and knew very, very little about the mortgage industry. I did come from a extensive sales background in my former industry. So I did know that component and I knew that component quite well, but I didn't know anything about mortgages and I, I didn't know where to obtain my clients. I reached out to one of my friends who was also in the mortgage business and asked him, okay, I'm started. Where do I go? Where do I find my deals? Started in an office, sole man in the shop, not a single employee in my surroundings. So I didn't have a lot of mentors. I didn't know where to get my clients. One of his first statements to me is do what everybody else does and pick up the phone book in 2001, we actually had phone books. So I picked up an actual book with names and numbers, started dialing for dollars. I wasn't calling clients, I was calling real estate agents, like many people did when they entered into the mortgage business as well. Some of you still do it, whether you're calling or knocking on doors. Many people in the mortgage industry are still chasing real estate agents, which is fine. And like you, I reached out and started calling real estate agents and had not the most exciting experience with that process. Calling them up, most of them didn't want to be bothered. A tremendous amount of rejection. And for those few that I actually courted into a quick conversation over coffee or lunch, I realized that it was going to be a very painful process. Here, I found very quickly that the real estate agents that I did create this relationship with either needed my referral business more than I needed theirs, which wasn't good, wasn't what I intended, or they were very demanding and were trying to always tell me what to do as a loan officer, how we should perform, what was acceptable, what wasn't acceptable. And they weren't even in the mortgage business trying to give me insight as to how to do my job. And you know, I just didn't have the moral fortitude to go through that. I didn't have thick enough skin to be treated in that fashion, considering I had a great deal of pride as an exceptional salesperson. It didn't mean that I was a good loan officer. I was just an except, exceptional salesperson. And I didn't, I didn't take kindly to being treated the way that most real estate agents were treating me. And I know I know a lot of you feel the same way behind closed doors and you won't do it in public. I know the things that you say about real estate agents and the love hate relationship that you've had all these years with real estate agents. Yet, despite this being a common theme in our industry, most loan officers still pursue real estate agents as being their source of business. Hell, Large companies do it, setting up illegal MSAs, which is just basically a giant RESPA violation, but they still do it because they believe that getting business from real estate agents is their best source and best use of time, money, and energy. Well, I learned very quickly in 2001 that that wasn't going to be me. Plus, I couldn't understand why anybody, any, any professional salesperson would ever rely on somebody else for their business. 
that seems extremely dangerous. And what it, it didn't take me long to, to, to realize from, from speaking with other, loan, with, with other loan officers that they're quite fickle. The real estate agents, I mean, you could perform exceptionally well on a dozen transactions and you have one go sideways, whether it was your fault or the borrower's fault or the property's fault. And you could lose that source of income forever. The real estate agent would move on to another lender that was promising them whatever they were promising. So I didn't want to do that. It didn't make business sense. It didn't make sound financial business sense for me to rely on the real estate agent for my business. And the other thing that I didn't understand very early on is that it seemed like the whole system was backwards where borrowers would go to the real estate agent first, and then the real estate agent would refer them back to the loan officer to get them pre-qualified in which they go back to the real estate agent to show them the house. It seemed like the whole sequence was screwed up. And this is what I realized immediately. Why weren't the, why weren't the, why weren't the borrowers going to the loan officers first to find out if they could even qualify? And then the loan officers would give them to a real estate agent. That was the, the logical and intuitive way to do business. Yet it really hasn't been done that way in our industry, not by the masses. And I, I don't understand it. I never have understand it. And I didn't buy into it. So and it wasn't because I was so far ahead of my time that I could foresee the future and what the future of this industry was going to. It just didn't make sense to me. So I went directly to the consumer. I gave up the phone book. I gave up talking to real estate agents. In fact, I really didn't want to have anything to do with real estate agents. And over the course of my career, being a very, very high producing, high volume real estate or loan officer turned branch manager, producing branch manager, high volume, high units, 70 plus percent of my business historically has been purchased. I never dealt with real estate agents. I never had to. Yes, they were on the other side of the transaction, but the client was mine. The client was never the real estate agents. And so if I, if a real estate agent was on the phone hounding me about this, that, and the other thing, I could just hang up the phone. I didn't really need to take their grief. I didn't need to pay, take their insults. I didn't need to take any of that. Now that might seem counterintuitive to most of you guys, but I didn't need their business to generate more business. I didn't need their referral business to, to increase my income. I didn't need it. Now, of course, if I performed extremely well, these real estate agents would just as a residual effect continue to give me business, but it wasn't because I needed it. It was frosting on the cake, so to speak. So how did I do it? Now, again, 2001, 2002, well before social media, I mean, I started by getting up at 3.30 in the morning and running door to door through people's hedges and putting flyers on people's doors, telling them what the interest rates were doing. Interest rates are dropping, now is a good time to refinance. Interest rates are dropping, now is a good time to purchase a home. And while that seemed like hard manual labor that God forbid any loan officer would get up early and actually physically exercise to generate more business. Yeah, people looked at me strangely. People within my own company at the time, the company I worked for would clown me for these, these actions. Even the owner of the company I worked for would look at me sideways from time to time. He was like, what are you doing? I didn't know, I didn't know any better. So I went directly to consumer and I'm not advocating that you go and put flyers on people's doors today, although you might just be surprised at the outcome, but in a very, very short period of time, I think it was within just over a year's time, I refinanced 56 houses in my neighborhood. So in a very, very quick period of time, I was making two, three times more money than all the loan officers that were clowning me for getting up in the morning and go door to door and put flyers. Cause I was going directly to the consumer. Again, they were still knocking on real estate agents doors and I was going directly to the consumer. Now that seems prehistoric today with all the technology, but it worked and it worked exceptionally well for years and years and years and years. And the other thing that I did is having come out of the fitness industry, I learned a lot of these techniques from being in that industry is I started going where the consumers are. 
So let me ask you this. Come noon today when you're trying to eat your lunch, where are your customers at? You ever thought about that? Where are they at? Most of us in the business aren't getting walk-ins. It's not like we're sitting there waiting for people to walk through our doors. That's not happening with most places. Where are your customers at? They're at work. So the other thing that I did, which I did very, very effectively in the fitness industry, is I went to them at work. I contacted companies and I started going in and doing presentations for, for, for employees at companies. And I can tell you all these trade secrets because most of you won't do them and most of you don't know how to do them effectively anyway. I've been teaching this for years for the loan officers that work for me and my company, and yet most of them don't do it. Why? Because it's different. It's different. It's different than what's been pounded into their head year after year after year. You got to build real estate, real estate agent relationships, which is factually not true. It's just what the industry has been ineffectively and inefficiently been doing long before I got into the business. Because I can run circles around that business plan and that business philosophy. And not to say that some of you have done it quite well, you have. In fact, if I would have done it a little bit better and made that a part of my business plan, I probably would have had more money and made more money over the years. I just can't do it. Like I said, I just can't do it. I can't bring myself to cater to the real estate agents. Can't do it. Doesn't make me smarter. I just figured out better ways to do it. Because instead of knocking on one door and talking to one real estate agent, I'd knock on one company's door and talk to several hundred employees, all gainfully employed. A very important part of being pre-approved for a mortgage, don't you think? And the other thing is the presentations that I was doing for, for companies and then later in, I got involved in events. See, but my whole business philosophy and plan is how to get in front of the largest amount of people in the shortest amount of time with the least cost. And it's very easy to do. It's very, very easy to do. And again, these techniques that I was using in 2001 work very, very effectively today, potentially even more effectively today because most people have gone different directions. They're not focused on talking to the consumer. They're not focused on that human contact with people, which blows my mind. Another topic for another conversation. So anyway, getting in front of a lot of people, going straight to the consumer is what I've done quite well for a long time. And again, when I was doing these presentations, it was also the commentary. What was I saying to these customers? And this is gonna flow right into what we're talking about, how consumers are generated today and will forever going forward. I didn't go into these presentations just like every other real estate professional, loan officer, real estate agent. And when somebody asks you a question, is it a good time to buy a house? Is it a good time to refinance? The answer overwhelmingly in this industry is yes, best time ever. Let's do it. Come on, let's take an application. Let's show you some houses. Let's sell you, despite what the market's doing, despite that interest rates might be continuing to slide. And we know that they're likely to slide or considering home prices are going to pull back. It's not always the best time. And you'd be amazed at how many times I've started presentations or I have created market updates and newsletters to my consumers and potential clients and told them the reality about things. You know, Mr. Jones, not a good time to buy a house. What? Why would you be telling your customer base not to purchase, not to do business with you? You know why? Because all my competition is 24 seven, regardless of the economic environment is always telling them to buy, 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 buy. And you know what? They're not looking out for the best interests of the customer because we know that's not always the, the, the proper response. We know that it's not always the best time to buy or telling consumers that maybe if, even if you can drop your interest rate today, maybe it's not a good thing to do for a particular reason. Or maybe pulling cash out is not in your best financial interest or buying a home with a 60% 60% back end debt to income ratio is not in their best interest. Because when I'm telling my customers and when I'm telling the general public things that 
My competition isn't. They listen to me. They listen to me. They're intrigued. It's kind of like the greatest takeaway closing that you can ever do. And for those of you that know anything about sales, the takeaway is a very powerful tool. All right. So let's fast forward into today. And by the way, just so I don't forget, is my CMO who radically changed my life uh, just over a year ago. He is on this call. And he might chime in toward the end of this once I get done with my rants. And you guys are welcome at any time to either chat questions or, or vocally ask us questions to get into the nitty gritty of what I'm talking about. Because he knows it better than I do. And that's another thing that I have to tell you is that if you're coming into any of these conversations with us and you come into it with the mindset that, well, let's put it this way, you better have an open-minded, positive attitude if you want to learn it all. Because what happens is, I, is as I give these classes to, to the general public or to my employees, is if you are closed-minded and you're of the mind frame that that doesn't work in my market, you're wrong. You're wrong. Just like the loan officer that says, I'm in the most competitive market in the country. You're not accurate. That's wrong. That's 100% wrong. And you will always be throwing out excuses for your weaknesses. I'm just telling you this. I'm just telling you this. I know that might rub you the wrong way, but it is what it is. And if you're not willing to open your mind to these ideas, then you're not going to gain from the experience. And I tell you that because prior to meeting James, my CMO, I knew what I knew. And I thought I knew everything there was to know about this mortgage business. I did. I knew what other people were doing that I didn't want to do that was successful. And I, I gave them credit for being successful in areas that I wasn't. I, I knew that what I was doing was generating me a greater return than nearly every loan officer I've ever met in this industry. I also know that to be true. And what happens is when you come up with an idea and you call, come up with a business plan and you become very, very successful with that business plan, and then you meet hundreds and thousands of people over the years in the same industry that do it different and are less successful, you start to believe that you know everything and that your way is best, but you only know what you know. And while what I knew was working very, very effectively, I also realized very quickly when, when I was introduced to James a year ago that I knew very, very little about marketing very little about marketing and the direction of this industry. Again, when I got started, there was no social media. And in fact, for, for a very long time, once, once LinkedIn and Facebook and Instagram and TikTok, I don't even know what TikTok is, but I guess it's like a new thing now. So TikTok and Snapchat and this, that, and I don't know why anybody would want to advertise on Snapchat because it doesn't just disappear. But anyway, I guess people are advertising on these different forums. And I didn't like it, right? And I didn't like it one because I'm not a hugely social person and I didn't want to post, you know, me eating hamburgers and this, that, and the other thing. I, I just didn't get it. And then when I saw other people, not only in the company that I work for, but also my competitors posting information, a lot of them were buying canned goods, right? They were going to a marketing company and all of them were buying the same shit and they're posting the same thing. So I've got all these connections with all these loan officers and real estate agents and on my Facebook feed and my LinkedIn feed, all I'm seeing is the same garbage, the same garbage. They might have a different logo, but it's the same crap. And most of it's, you know, buy, buy, buy. Now is the greatest time to buy. And it's all horseshit. It's not even true. And it just bothered me to no end. One, because they're speaking to the masses. They're putting out garbage that nobody cares about. They're putting out garbage that everybody can read. And if they, if from, from a variety of different sources, and they're really not educating anybody. Yes, interest rates went up. Great, interest rates went down. Home prices slide. I mean, there's really nothing there right? Why? Why did these things happen? Can't you get a little deeper than that? Can't you think for yourself and put out information that's, that's, and speak to your customers? Does your, you, I, I see it even today. I see people post the new loan limits are going up to whatever, $510,000. And I'm seeing loan officers post this when I know damn well their average loan amounts $100,000. It doesn't pertain to any of their customers. Nobody. 
Now, if you're in California, that's a very relevant thing. But if that's a highlight of your post being, you know, the conforming loan limits went up and not even explaining why. Talk to your own audience, relate to your customers. All right, so back to the social media deal. One of the most powerful tools and why I'm talking about this is for those of you that are still pursuing real estate agents and doubling down on real estate agents, you're chasing a dinosaur. And if you think I'm wrong, you just have to look at the statistics. And, and, and if you wait too long to look at the, the statistics and you're so set in your old ways of doing things, you too will be a dinosaur as well. And, and the speed of technology, the speed of innovation, the speed that things are going right now and happening in this world, not just in the mortgage industry, but across all industries is at a lightning fast pace. And these things that I'm talking about are happening today. It's not future, it's not Jetsons, it's happening right now. And not only is it happening right now, is that most of these things that you're doing will be, will be extinct in, in a matter of years. So it wasn't too long ago that the vast majority of transactions that closed in the mortgage space started with real estate agents. I don't have all the numbers historically on it, but I know not long ago it was, at, it was around the 70 percentile mark. So at 70 percent of the business transactions were started with real estate agents and then, then eventually ended up with fundings with the, the, the originators and the mortgage companies. Now, that's a high percentage, and I understand why it's a high percentage, because, again, everybody in most of my 20-year career has pursued real estate agents. So it just goes to show you that they were generating most of the business, even though that was asked backwards from day one. That's shifted. Over the last 18 months, 50% of that, at least 50% of that is gone. Okay? It's not happening anymore. I mean, it, it's happening to a very, very small degree, but it's falling off a cliff. I'm talking about 18 months. I'm not talking about 18 years, this shift. I'm talking about 18 months. You see a 50% plus drop in the amount of transactions that are coming from real estate agents to a funded transaction. So where are they coming from? Reach out to your real estate friends and ask them where their business is coming from. It's coming from loan officers coming from loan officers. And I started seeing the shift. I didn't actually put two and two together about two years ago, when all of a sudden I got loan officers complaining that the real estate agents shopping them. I'm like, what are you talking about? The beautiful thing about a purchase transaction and dealing with real estate agents is that typically they were not price sensitive. The, the, the borrower had a relationship with the real estate agent, the real estate agent, you said you need to do use Aaron for your mortgage. And they did. And they rarely questioned the terms of the interest rates. That was the, I'm not saying that's necessarily good for the consumer. I'm just telling you that's how it was done. So they were not price sensitive, which was why a lot of people went into the purchase business. They wanted to focus on purchase transactions because it wasn't a price sensitive situation. You didn't run into shoppers nearly as much as you do today. And, and when I started hearing that the real estate agents were actually comparing interest rates, I didn't understand it. When did that happen? Why did that happen? What does a real estate agent care? They've never cared about their clients before. They just want to get them into a house. They've never cared what the client paid for that house. They never cared about what the client paid on their interest rate on their mortgage. Never. Don't think they did. But now all of a sudden they care. Why do they care? And it was a huge shift that happened so, so fast. And I know a lot of you can relate to the story because you've been through it. Well, the reason why is the client came to the real estate agent with free qualification letter in hand with an interest rate on it. It was a new shift in the business and it happened exceptionally fast. So now these real estate agents that you're working with, they're getting their clients pre-approved. And so when you send them and they're trying to give you the business, they're trying to steer it away from whoever provided that letter to them. And they're, they're trying to send it to you to have, that you have a working relationship, but they're already pre-qualified. So you're up against a shopper out of the gate. All of a sudden your life got way more difficult because your real estate agent's clients are pre-qualified. And how did that happen? Well, that largely happened because loan officers and sometimes companies got really smart about going after the consumer. 
And some of them just did it online with massive marketing spend. You've got your quick ins, your loan depots, you know what I'm talking about. Bank rates. You have these companies that have monster marketing budgets and that's how they generate their business. They don't pay their loan officers anything because they're spending it all on generating the clients online. And I don't anticipate any one of you is gonna just start stroking a check for $100,000 a month in marketing budget because if you did and your message was good, you would generate a lot of income. At least you should. But nobody's willing to take that risk. Not in an individual loan officer level. Only the big companies. And again, if you wanna work for the big companies, you're not gonna make a penny in compensation. So pick your poison. And then you got loan officers and, and intuitive companies, smaller companies that are outmaneuvering the big ones because they're providing content, not only to the individual's database, which is hugely important. It's been my focus since day one, growing the biggest database I can and promise you the one that has the biggest database will always win. It's a numbers game, it's a numbers game. Growing these databases and then supplying proper content to your database and your social media network circles. And that's also about generating databases. It's not just what's in your CRM. It's also what's on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Snapchat, whatever. How many followers do you have? How many people are paying attention to your content? And how many people are actually paying attention to your content, content through all these mediums is going to depend greatly on what your content is. Is it engaging? Is it educational? Does it create an interaction? Is it speaking to them? If your clientele is largely Hispanic, do, does all your marketing pieces have Caucasians or African Americans on it? That doesn't make sense. You're not talking to them. Is your client, is your content talking to your database? Is it talking to the consumers that you're trying to talk to? And is it delivering the proper message? Again, if you're doing tiny little manufactured homes in Alabama and you're talking to all your clients about the conforming loan limits raised, you are missing the mark. You're missing the mark. Are you advertising we have this great jumbo 90% financing when you've never had a client that needed jumbo financing? What are you doing? And see, that's the other problem is that a lot of these large companies that even provide marketing for their employees, they just dish out more crap to the masses. And it's not targeting your clients. It's not. And most of the, 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 the marketing materials that you see online, you don't even have to take my word for it. Just go on Facebook, go on LinkedIn and just scroll. And if you guys have a network of real estate agents and mortgage professionals and title companies, it's, it's all of, mostly the same content. Same thing goes for video content. You see loan officers, real estate agents, and they're all saying the same thing. They're saying the same thing. There's nothing engaging about it. There's nothing that creates an emotional response. I think some of the best ones, and it's not me, it's not my not, not my nature, but these people that get on and kind of act the fool and they're witty and they're funny and they do crazy shit on the, 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 the social media sites, it engages me, even me. I'll be like, what is that person doing? And I watch and I pay attention and I follow because I want to see what they do next. That's one way to generate your business. But the content has to match your customer. It has to be engaging. And ideally you wanted to get them to talk about yourself. Every single month since 2002, I've been writing a market newsletter, a market updates, okay? And I constantly hear from newer employees, they get my market update for the first time and they're like, who do you send this to Aaron? Who are you sending this to? I'm like, well, I send it to you guys, my employees, because one, I want you to get educated because it's very educational. 
but I also send it to all my data, my database, all my clients. Why, why do you ask? And the response is, is like, you know, sometimes it's not so positive. Sometimes it's kind of negative. Sometimes it's kind of scary. Sometimes it's not asking people to buy. I'm like, well, maybe because it's real. And I'm talking about real things and reality. And it's relating to people because when I send it out to my database and they read it, I get people that call me or email me all the time. They call me up, Aaron, I think you're full of it. And they, and they argue with me. They're enraged by something that I said. And it's not an opinion piece. I'm just telling them the reality of what's going on. And at the end of the conversation, they mostly end with, so what do you think about refinancing? I mean, my rate's right now is 6%. Do you think I should refinance? It creates a conversation. It creates an engagement. It spurs an emotional response, which is why I do it. Not only to educate them, but it's creating an emotional response. I promise you, when I send out an email and I say that, you know, to my database, I say a recession is imminent in 2020 and job growth is dead. Now, I didn't say it necessarily like that. What do you think is going to happen? You have 50% of the country that says, no way that's going to happen. And they get on the phone with me and they got pitchforks in hand. How could you say such a thing about this economy? And if you're right, should I buy this house? Should I refinance my house? How should I get staged if you're right, Aaron? And the other 50% has another response for a completely different reason. I win. I win both ways. I'm creating an emotional response, which is what you should be doing with all your marketing. If you're marketing to your social media networks and your database is not creating an emotional response, stop sending it. And if you're just relying on the canned crap that most companies produce for their employees, you're not doing much better. You might be even hurting yourself. You know, how many other people do your real estate agents know and do, your, do your, your, your clients potentially know that know the same people in your same company? And if you're, if you're just spouting off the same garbage over and over and over again, they're not going to pay any attention to it. Or if you have canned information that maybe it's, maybe it's not the best of content or maybe it's really good content. But a lot of people are putting out that content. How do you differentiate yourself from everybody else? Not only your competition, but also people within your own company, especially those big, big companies that have massive market saturation. I don't have that problem. But if you are with a company that has that problem, how are you going to make yourself different than all the other employees? No matter how great the marketing might be that that company is producing. Maybe a message, maybe a note, maybe not take the information from them and just put it on, you know, print media, but maybe you take the information and use it as a, a guideline for the video that you're going to shoot of yourself doing something crazy, something different, something unusual, something that would catch somebody's eye. Think about yourself as a consumer. What attracts you to buying things? on Cyber Monday. What advertisements are catching your attention and why are they catching your attention? Is it just because you needed that fancy Dyson hairdryer? Is that the reason? Maybe, but it could have been something bigger in that messaging. And maybe try to emulate that with your own personal touch. When you're going through social media today, Flip through the screens and how many of those people that you see all of a sudden the video starts running and you can't hear the content, but there's just a guy sitting there. That's all you can see is moving his head around and mouth moving. How many times do you listen? Wow, that looks interesting. A dude standing there in front of a green screen, moving his lips. I need to hear what he has to say because there's 300 more right below it. Are you watching all those? Hell no, you're not. Neither is your customer. But if they're doing a dance, they're dressed up, if they're emotional, their hands are moving around, they're doing something out of the ordinary, be creative. You might go, that dude's nuts. 
I got to hear what he has to say. It's the little things. It's the little things. <laughs> Dyson hair dryer. I don't even have hair, but I want to buy the Dyson hair dryer because it looks cool. And I, I don't know what I did. I don't know what I clicked on, but it's on all my social media sites. I just use that as an, an example. All right. What time is it? 8.36. Does anybody have any questions? If not, <laughs> if not, I'm going to defer this over. James, you want to chime in because you're you're the technical ex expert on all of this. Yeah, I want to um, actually jump in on a couple points. And one of the, the bigger things that people tend to forget, and this industry is notoriously bad about it, is your past clients. And um, you've got you've got your however long you've been doing mortgages, you've got a, a backfield of diamonds that we tend to ignore. And we're always, uh, where's the next deal? Where's the next fresh meat? Where, when, when's the next agent going to send me the next deal? Or, or, you know, and then you're completely ignoring your past clients that are a treasure trove of family and friends and coworkers. So um, what we do for our loan officers here and what you should consider doing at your company or um, in your own business model for yourself as a mortgage loan officer is to start marketing the second you get that mortgage. The second you get that transaction with, with a, a new client is you start marketing that minute. Because, and, and this is, um, you're gonna laugh at me, but I um, assimilate uh, marketing through a transaction as an STD. Every single person that, that you're talking to, um, you're basically talking to everybody that they know. So similar to an STD, everyone you sleep with, you're sleeping with everyone they slept with. You have to consider, um, you know, the person in front of you, and this stretches even to networking when you meet new people, they may never buy a home. They may never go through a transaction with you. They may never refinance, um, but they may send 10 people your way. And I've met many loan officers that, that think in that aspect of every person that they meet is, has so many connections, and they do have people that send them deals that have never actually had a transaction with that loan officer. So you want to start marketing in the very beginning with uh, a transaction that you get. And if you get really, really good at it, suddenly you don't have to hunt anymore. Suddenly it's coming to you. Now you do have to rack up, uh, you know, a good history of past clients uh, with multiple transactions to get to that point. But I tell you what, it gets easier year after year if you are focused on the people that you have done transactions with. So start it, and I and I when I do coaching, I teach them from day one when that when that uh, loan app comes in that you make sure you're marketing throughout that entire process all the way to the end when you're asking for an online review, which every online review that you get is building your SEO. Then the consumer, not a real estate agent, the consumer that's on Google looking for a mortgage calculator or for uh, refinance. Should I refinance? If you go and Google some of our own industry terms, when's the last time you've done that? Look at what people are looking for. Those are consumers looking for those things. Those aren't real estate agents looking. They are searching actively and Google will show you commonly asked questions and you will be dumbfounded at the questions that the, the stuff that they are looking for. They want to be educated. All you have to do is do a few quick searches and copy and paste those questions and you've got a bunch of articles or videos that you could record on what people are actually searching for, what they really want. So now you've done a little bit of intel. So you um, want to be considering that uh, throughout the whole process. But when they're searching for those, those uh, things, if you've got a bunch of reviews because you've been marketing through your transactions, if you've got a bunch of reviews from your past clients, you're gonna to start to pop up on page one, two, three, because you have a bunch of reviews out there. And you've got a bunch of videos on your social media. You've got a bunch of keywords because you write about the questions that you found when you researched on, on Google. So I'm not gonna dive much deeper into that, but start with your past clients. That, that's a huge element. And the other piece I wanna mention about real estate agents is you know, a lot of people are really panicky right now. This is kind of a new concept for loan officers is, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to piss off my agents. I don't want them leaving me or going to another loan officer because they know I'm actively looking for consumers. 
um, you're not abandoning them. In fact, they've been feeding loan officers for years. Your, your conversation with them needs to be based around, isn't it time that we gave back? And the second you tell your, your real estate agent that and just say, I've learned some things going direct to consumer, let's work on this together. And then you've got a real partner again, because it's been, it's been very unloyal and touch and go for, for the last at least six years. It's gotten worse and worse and worse on the loyalty level. And if you um, get with them and say, hey, this whole industry is shifting. It's all about the consumer getting pre-qualification first. And on that point, a lot of people think that this shift is happening because of tech companies coming in like Open Door and OfferPad. That's not true. Um, what Aaron was talking about is accurate. It's, it's all the social media that's been happening. If you scroll through <laughs> your feeds, you're going to see a ton of content. If you're connected with a bunch of real estate people, you're going to see a ton of content about, hey, ding dong, don't go looking for a house until you're pre-qualified. Well, they've been out there for years. We've been pushing it, pushing it, pushing it. The consumer is listening. So now they are going and finding a loan officer first because the message has been heard loud and clear. It had nothing to do with any other tech company that's coming into the industry. It had to do with us educating. And that's actually a good thing. We made change through all of that education and the agents actually helped us. So they shouldn't be punished for it and have that conversation with them, but say, this is actually gonna make your life easier. They're coming to you pre-qualified. I'm handing them to you already ready to go. You know how much money they can spend that you're gonna spend less time shopping. Create a true partner at real estate agents again. And that's gonna make you a lot more powerful in your day-to-day -day, uh, life. So start with your past clients. There's a lot of things you can do and we'll do some other um, real um, channel specific trainings on, on things you can do on social media to reach the public. And, and it's more about branding than just throwing random flyers out there. It's about creating a name for yourself. And um, they, they should just remember what you do for a living, but they should remember more um, the things that you're putting out there, the good that you're doing in the community, the way that you make them feel, whether it's laughter or heartfelt or whatever your thing is. They should remember that, but they should tie it to, oh, that he's a loan officer, she's a loan officer. And when it comes time, because let's face it, mortgages aren't shoes. We're not buying, um, we're not buying homes once a week, twice a month, whatever is, is bought on frequency. We're not fast food. So you got to be in their mind when it comes along those one, two, three times in their life that they need to make a decision to work with someone. You need to be at the top of their brain. Or when their boss is like, ah, I was thinking about doing a refinance and it just happens to come up, I have the person for you. Don't use anybody else. You want to be that name that, re that comes out of their mouth. So those are the things that you should be doing to, to you know, work with your consumers, get them coming your way. It's a lot more powerful and a lot less difficult uh, for you and, and less frustrating um, than, than waiting for that next deal to come along. But man, if you've got any kind of past client database, treat them like absolute gold and spend the next year, spend 2020 reconnecting with your past clients. Do a, a client appreciation event, really get in front of them, stay in front of them with weekly newsletters um, and, and just communicate, but give them a call and, and, and just as simple as asking, hey, do you know anybody? I have goals for 2020, January's coming up. It's a great time to start making those calls and say, I have really huge goals. If you know anybody, I would love to get three names from you. Um, that'd be helpful. So start to focus on those things. And then um, as far as the agents go, turn them into true partners and you cannot lose, you cannot lose. This industry is going consumer forward and that's what your focus should be is getting yourself your name your face your voice in front of consumers all right i know there's some questions out there who's got them unmute it's always crickets okay. <laughs> it is bob chain here what's up bob how you doing good how are you uh, going to your Google suggestion, you stole my idea. 
in the morning, I got up and I think of a question about mortgage. It's just any question. Um, how do you like your loan officer? Go to Google, find an article, cut and paste, change it a little bit. And while you're on Google, hit the image. It'll show you a picture of what you're talking about. And you have an article. That's how I have over 300 articles in my LinkedIn. Yep. And it's easier to buy. It takes you five minutes. Yep. Yep. There's a lot of, there's a lot of things that you can do. Um, researching on Google is a, is a great way to go. Google alerts is awesome. You should have a Google alert set for your own name. That stuff works really, really well. Um, I, right. also, I also highlight a, a product every day, uh, show the image, give a short explanation of it, and you know, send out 13,000 of them. Yeah, but you know what? I mean, on Aaron's point, people don't care. They, they really don't care what the product is. They don't, they don't care what the DTI is. And when I walked into this industry, man, I was scratching my head. I've been in advertising for 30 years now, and... Uh, about 25 at that point and uh, I was scratching my head on the on the lender side because a the whole um, going to real estate agent angle but um, it, it was just very confusing on the flyers and the materials the marketing materials everything was LTV DTI and, and all of these things that the consumer has no clue and the agents are, are handing these flyers and they want a flyer on absolutely everything. It used to be my big joke that they wanted a flyer to go to the bathroom or they're going on vacation. Can you make me a flyer that I'm going on vacation? It, it's crazy um, that I know those flyers wound up in the back seat of cars along with the business cards that they never use. Um, and so it's, uh, Gene, there should be an unmute button. I will find you and unmute you here in a second. Um, but it's crazy that, you know, the messaging, we weren't talking to consumers at all. We weren't telling their story. And that's um, when I, the first day, I, I believe it was the first day I started here, I shot a video and sent it to everyone in the company. And I said, this is the book I'm reading currently. And it's about telling a brand story. Um, and one of the biggest mistakes, and it's not just this industry, there's a lot of business industries and advertising. And you're gonna start to pay attention now that you're hearing this to commercials that you see, to stuff that you see on social media that aren't telling the story of the consumer. What is that? And it's, it's like a movie. If you go to a movie, you know who the main character is pretty quickly. You know what the problem they're facing is and you know what you want the result to be. And, and when you think about communicating to individuals that you want to work with you, think of those three simple things. They're the hero of the story, not you. Not, I got this deal done. No, no, no. That, that does not resonate with a consumer. They don't want to hear that. That means absolutely nothing to them. It's not, I, I crushed 70, um, you know, 75 uh, deals this year. It's, I helped 75 families get into a home. Some of them, you know, um, they thought they couldn't get it. They couldn't get into a home. But when you do have those instances, tell their story. This is why I ask them if they want to be on video and tell their own story. Make them the hero of the story. That's a lot more effective in communicating to your base. All right, Gene, we're going to, if you're still on here, we'll unmute you. Oh, I think we lost Gene. Who has got a question? I'm you. Engage. James, this is Denise. Hey, Denise. How are you? Good, how are you? Great. Um, I'm loving this topic of conversation because as I commented when uh, Aaron first started talking, I am totally tired of chasing the dinosaur. And so I've been trying to, you know, change my efforts to marketing and uh, Facebook and LinkedIn and uh, gearing it more towards um, uh, the consumer. And a lot of realtor ones also, but I'm not seeming, I'm not getting the response I want. And so I would love more guidance on that. I'm not sure what I might be doing wrong. Like I even sent out an email this, or a tech, uh, message this morning on Facebook. Are you wondering if now's a good time to refi? Are you wondering if now's a good time to purchase? Please call me, let's, let's discuss your options, pros and cons, blah, blah, blah. And I've been doing more and more of that, but I'm not getting the response I want or expected. 
Uh, number one, uh, the number one thing that, and I get this question all the time, and no matter what company they work for, um, you know, the answer is most times your audience. You, you need to be growing your audience and refreshing your audience every single day. The, the second answer to that is you should be focused more on your personal page than on your business page, on, on, uh, especially on Facebook. Uh, it's a lot more impactful. Again, these are social media platforms, personal, people, humans. So humans want to connect with humans. They don't want to connect with the business page. They're going to be interested in big brand business pages like Nike and HGTV and, and things that they engage with in their daily lives, those brands that, that matter to them on a daily basis. They're not going to a mortgage business um, Facebook page more than once a year. And so in our industry, in industries like ours, Facebook business pages are a necessary evil. They, um, they need to be there because it will hurt you if it's not but they're basically a digital yellow pages. So people aren't going to be looking, you know, looking up your name, looking for you and, and going on your page all the time and looking for content. They're going to do that on your personal page. And I usually, I usually do do more personal posts, but if right. I do post on my uh, business, I'll take that business post and share it to my personal page. No, nope. So people nope. have the link. Nope. I'm going right to no. stop you right there. You, you should um, upload it organically to both. Facebook punishes you for sharing from your business page to your personal page. All your content you want to upload it is as much of a pain it is as it is to do it twice. You need to do it twice because you'll get more um, you'll get more exposure. Okay. You, uh, Facebook will engage. Gene, do you have a question? Yeah, can you hear me now? I can. Awesome. Okay. Devil advocate, I guess here. Everything you're saying, these posts that we put on Facebook, the daily things like the 30 things or whatever being uh, whatever we're doing right now, complete opposite is what we've been trained, taught and everything from actual Facebook. I've actually taken classes and spoken to actual Facebook people that posting those to your personal page actually does complete opposite. A, every single person on there that comments is people with Geneva. Every person that likes it are people with Geneva. All the people that are your friends and people that you're trying to engage with actually hide you and you don't realize that. And I think at the last time I took a class was a few months ago, they said something like 87% of your actual friends, if you continue to post business related, will actually block you without knowing it. So that what we're doing, obviously some people it works, but why are we, what has changed, I guess, is what I'm trying to ask over the last year that we've been taught completely opposite. Don't continue to post personal. I get more response from my personal by posting a stupid picture at five o'clock in the morning with a desk full of files. What are you guys doing at 5.30 on a Saturday morning? Rates are low, call me. But the actual posting every single day of business, actually you're losing friends. Your people are hiding you because they don't wanna see it. So I don't know, I'm, basically I'm asking is what has changed that we've been taught over the last couple of years to now post, 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 post. What's changes is how we're doing it and the content. And, and when they're there, when Facebook has to teach, they're teaching across all industries. And um, yeah, if you're posting about uh, mortgage products every single day, yeah, you're going to get a lot of blocks. You're going to get a lot of unfriends. You're going to get people going away. But things like that are different, like the, um, the November promotion that we did with the um, thankful, what are you thankful for? Those get engagement, asking engaging questions about what was uh, your favorite memory about the first place you lived after you left your parents' homes. Those got tons of engagement. And I have screenshot after screenshot after screenshot of people actually asking to connect about a transaction that prove this method works. We've got so many transactions that have originated directly from these posts occurring. Now, if you're posting about, um, oh, I have a new refinance product or a new this product every single day, people don't want to see that. But they want to engage on things. And if the logo just happens to be on there, that's called branding. That's the difference. You're not pushing it in their face. Now, every once in a while, should you get strictly business? Absolutely. The post that you said that, you know, here's where I am 530 in the morning, I'm working hard. If you have any questions about refinance, uh, contact me. Yes, you should be direct on occasion. 
but you need to have a good mix and you need to have a good mix of personal. So on that point also on your business page, posting personal things to your business page is also highly effective because people like seeing that they want to see you as a human. But the reason we're doing posts that have high engagement is because that engagement is actually training individuals. So if you're mostly getting industry people on, on likes on your stuff, then you want to start to cultivate your audience. You want to start to grow out from industry and look for other types of connections on your social media. Look for past um, employers that weren't mortgage. Look for, you know, even going back to your first job if you're still living in the same state. Your high school, if you're, if you're in the same state you went to high school. Start to connect with people you went to high school with, college. Um, connect with friends of friends and grow that out. And then look at a business to business thing. Join the chamber and start to connect with everybody on social media that's on the chamber list that you get when you become a member. And grow that audience out because yeah, you're going to be most highly engaged with industry. That's that's how this industry, this industry especially, I've never seen anything like it, is highly engaged with each other. But don't, don't think because they're not clicking like or commenting that eyeballs aren't on it. That's why I love Facebook stories and Instagram stories because it tells you exactly how many eyeballs are on those posts. And it's a lot more than you might think. And, and it is people, I will post something on newsfeed, my right on my page on Facebook or Instagram, and I'll get a certain amount of likes, and I can see it's the usual culprits. But if I post it in the stories and it tells you who saw, you can look. It's almost like seeing who's spying on you, because I can pull that up and I can look, and it's people that never click like on my posts. They're scrolling through my stories, so that tells you right there that there are eyeballs on your post that aren't clicking like, they aren't commenting, but man, they're seeing your brand and they're seeing you out there. So um, that helps <clears throat> get, uh, get your messaging out. And it takes time, the branding approach takes time, but it is effective over time. Long, long-winded answer, but I hope that answered your question. All right, any other questions? That's it. All right, we're at an hour. So uh, feel free if anybody has any questions on uh, going direct to consumer, then, uh, or if you're interested in seeing what we do at Geneva for, um, for we are 95% all consumer forward marketing now uh, and, and teaching that. And then we're um, the, five, the other 5% five is we're creating partners out of our real estate agents doing coaching for, for them, marketing boot camps uh, for marketing plans and social media channels, really helping them survive in, in a new world uh, that's changing. So um, if you are interested in making a move uh, and want to talk about want a, a company that provides that kind of marketing for you, give, uh, give me a shout out at uh, James P at GenevaFi.com and happy to kind of talk to you about uh, what the offering is, what we're doing. And uh, also, if you just have any random questions, shoot them over to myself or Aaron, Aaron at GenevaFi.com. Um, Aaron, did you have any last uh, comments? No, just I one, one last thing on the uh, whole Facebook thing. And one, one thing that I want to caution everybody, because I, I, I monitor this with uh, our own company, is that while I think Facebook on your personal page, just like you said, James, is, is extremely effective, what I see early in the conversation is the things that I'm opposed to is the continuous garbage. That's what I'm referring to the canned information about, you know, interest rates up, down, you know, conventional loan limits churning, changing. If you're just posting that content, you will drive people away. And, and for those of you that are, are part of Geneva Financial, you'll see that most of our posts aren't that. We very rarely actually have call to action posts it's mostly engagement. It's mostly posts that will get the client engaged in a fun conversation on things that are not industry related. And people do pay attention. Even I'm shocked at how many people, because for most of my life, being not a very social media, personal type person is, I'm shocked at the responses that I get when I'm posting this content. It's a lot and they're engaged and it's a fun conversation. 
Again, it's all part of branding. One last thing is if you're using, and I hope you all are using the personal Facebook for your business marketing, as we've been discussing, be careful of the other posts that you're posting them on there on a personal level. And, and you may not care. You might just throw caution to the wind. And if you offend people, you offend people or whatever. But again, that's your audience. And if you get somebody to engage you on your page because of a, a, a business post that is engaging, they can very well search through the rest of your pictures of you doing potentially scandalous things that will move them immediately away from you. And again, which is why on my personal Facebook posts, I never post things politically. I never post things about religion. I don't post things that any, any of those things that would potentially offend people because it's counter to my business. And I use Facebook as primarily business. Now you can do that. If you wanted to be very religious on Facebook, all the power to you, but you might turn off a segment and that might be okay with you because you might be tar targeting that particular, particular um, segment of the population. All I'm stating is think through the things that you're posting on Facebook if you're using Facebook as a business site. Think it through because it can terribly impact your business. And like Jean said, you could have people disengaging from you, not because of your business posts, but because of your posts, you know, out at the fire range shooting guns, as an example. So I'm just pay attention, cleanse your Facebook if you're using it as a as a business site. That's all I got. Thanks, James, for your participation as well. Thank everybody for attending. We do this on the first Tuesday of every month. Looking forward to seeing you all in January.